Hi everyone, welcome um, here in Cape Town. Uh, you are now joining the digital studios at the Cape Town Conversations within the G20 process. My name is Carolina Rossini, I'm the moderator for this panel, and I have the pleasure to be joined by Amor Maklangan from the Philippines, uh, from Digital Asia, and Anir Chaudhry from Bangladesh. Could I ask you uh, to introduce yourself? Hola. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Amor Maklang uh, from the Philippines, uh, representing Digital Filipinas, Digital ASEAN, a pioneering digital economies ecosystem builder. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carolina. Uh, I run the digital transformation program of the government of Bangladesh with support from UNDP and several other donors. Been doing it for the last 16 years. AI has been taking a center stage discussion in the last couple of years and very recently, even much more so. Exactly, thank you so much. So you are actually joining us now for our panel on Tech for Good, navigating the intersection of uh, AI governance, artificial intelligence governance. And as I mentioned, my name is Carolina Rossini. I'm the co-founder and director for research and policy at the Data Sphere Initiative. We are a nonprofit organization uh, that works on improving data governance for future technologies, including AI, and I'm also a professor at Boston University. So joining us today with Amor and Anir, uh, one question I have for you. Uh, uh, AI has been uh, making the news uh, for actually a couple of years now, even more so now with ChatGPT and other things, right? It's very polarized. Uh, and in the past few weeks, you had reports coming from the OECD, you have the new order coming from the uh, White House, uh, you have some activity in the Mercosur here in the G20. So tell us a little bit what um, your organizations are doing in this space and how you can contribute for this global uh, dialogue. Um, so Carolina, uh, I feel that uh, the use of AI uh, is misdirected. It's not intended to make us look like we're perpetually high school students, right, for a profile pic. Um, what we're doing in Digital Filipinas is working to use AI in areas that matter to our region in ASEAN, primarily in the area of healthcare. Uh, and also in uh, digital lending. So those two areas are of great importance to us in the Philippines and in uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, in the case of healthcare, for example, we have the highest incidence of tuberculosis, unacceptable, 600 for every thousand. Um, have instances of TB, according to the WHO, and uh, some of the best use cases for AI and uh, uh, machine learning is actually um, in the area of healthcare. Digital lending, uh, we are allowed now to uh, uh, be better at uh, using alternative data because of AI. So we want, we hope to see more of that, more excitement in that space. Thank you. Thank you, Anir. Well, AI came to the forefront in Bangladesh during COVID. We had one RT-PCR lab in a country of 170 million people. So that means that we had to resort to alternative technologies to actually track the disease. And that's where we used AI. We published our national helpline number, 333, as a way for people to report their symptoms, so self-reported symptoms. And we used AI to analyze that data, clean up the data, and find where the disease was spreading the fastest. So that's, mm -hmm. that's when AI actually took the center stage attention in policy making during COVID. We had been working on AI for a bit uh, since 2019 actually. We developed an AI strategy uh, for the entire government and private sector on seven different uh, development areas. But uh, it was during COVID which actually catapulted AI into the center stage. Going forward in the recent uh, recent months, maybe a couple of years actually, we saw AI in three specific areas making the most impact. I mentioned healthcare, and uh, continuing forward, we actually started working on AI for pregnancy monitoring. So essentially identifying uh, high-risk pregnancies based on information, wearable computing information, that they're sending to the healthcare providers. Second is in the area of education. Uh, we are going, doing a massive paradigm shift from formative assessment, uh, from summative assessment to formative assessment. And that's where you are actually collecting information from every student through every teacher and analyzing that information to develop a trajectory of learning for every student. 
And the third area, I think I more actually talked about digital lending, but we are actually looking at our social safety nets. So 16 to 17 percent of our national budget goes into social safety net as a way to curb poverty. And if you look at the statistics in the last uh, 20 years plus, we've, actually, we've been able to have our extreme poverty and also have our uh, general poverty. So for, from 40 percent to about 20 percent, and from 21 percent extreme poverty to about 10 percent now. And that's because of the social safety net, very aggressive, uh, proactive social safety net programs we have. Now one problem was to identify uh, the poor people, because the surveys happen every 10 years or so. Now we're looking at a mechanism from Togo that is allowing us to look at cell phone data to identify poverty status on a real-time basis, almost on a real-time basis. So that's another third area we're using AI. And right now we're looking at a national policy for AI that we're drafting. Thank you so much. Those are incredible examples on AI being used for good. Um, uh, and I think the world should really look at those as uh, emergent best practices coming from the majority of the world, right? Um, but have you faced in your governments, in your initiatives, any challenge? Or perhaps do you see any missed opportunity because of also the fears that AI might uh, represent from issues of equity, inclusivity, even representation, right? A lot of machine learning models actually are trained in the global north instead of the global south. How have you been dealing with that in your regions? So uh, th my position this morning has uh, uh, been affirmed and changed when I heard the South, former South Africa finance uh, minister, uh, uh, Tito Mbueni, talk about how the SDG goals would have looked very different if it had not been written in New York and by the Global North, which, which begs the very same question, Carolina. Um, most of the conversations, taking off from our theme, uh, are actually happening in the UK and in the US. As a matter of fact, most of the guidelines um, uh, for AI governance and AI ethics are actually written by Pfizer, by um, Meta, by, uh, by the Global North. And where does that leave us? Uh, whose ethics are we trying to perpetuate? Whose philosophies are we trying to perpetuate? Let's learn from how the SDGs were crafted. And m mine is not so much an answer, forgive me. It's really more of a question and a challenge. Um, two days ago, I literally flew out of Jakarta, uh, where they launched for the first time the guidelines on um, AI governance specific to the banking and financial services sector. To my knowledge, it's probably the first attempt in Southeast Asia of um, a major market above 200 million to try to define it. So we're all, we're all hoping, and we hope to work closely with Brazil, who's actually led us in the global south in terms of guidelines, and hope we can work closely on that. So it's more favorable to the needs of us in the region. Thank you. Thank you. I couldn't agree more. And to, since you mentioned Brazil, the country I'm originally from, uh, Brazil has published a report with over 300 pages, exactly doing some benchmark and analyzing what, uh, what are the best practices and guidance that would work for the Global South. Uh, and I'm sure we can uh, collaborate further. Mercosur is also doing the same, ILAC. So we have lots of spaces besides the G20, or in addition, in the G20, better put, to work on this. Anir, comments on, on that question for you? I talked about AI for good, but there is also AI for bad, right? And that's what is concerning our policymakers the most. The first uh, fear is job losses, so how AI will actually take away jobs. We're already seeing that in every sector, uh, every manufacturing sector, service sector, even within the government. Uh, World Economic Forum published a report which said that about 85 million jobs will actually be lost by 2025. But they also talked about, the same report talked about how 97 million jobs will actually be created, provided we know how to use AI. So we used to say, that AI will replace human beings. Now we say AI will replace human beings who don't know how to use AI. So there is that issue of AI literacy, not digital literacy anymore, but AI literacy. How do we use AI in our day-to-day -day work? We're already using it, right? More talked about how we are being high school students by, uh, by basically 
being influenced by AI. Now we need to influence AI. So the guardrails that we need to put in place in terms of using the data that actually trains AI systems, the type of bias that gets introduced without us knowing about it. So if we train it with uh, Western or Northern data, it'll give us information and decisions based on that bias. So we need to bring in a lot of data from the Southern voices, from our own countries, which will actually provide the right type of direction to the different models, whether it's large language models, whether it's vision, whether, whatever it is. So I think we actually need to pay a lot of attention to that. So that's why we're now working on an AI policy in Bangladesh, which will provide the right guardrails for the right ethics and the right responsible use of AI in countries of the global south. Thank you, that's, that's wonderful. And I have uh, two uh, final questions for you, and then I would love to hear your, your final remarks. So ASEAN actually is a great example using the concept of sandboxes or test beds Correct. for artificial intelligence, exactly to understand how we can use for good or bad, how we can train it better, and how perhaps we can um, develop better policies and guardrails, right? Not to stop it, but to develop Correct. in a way that generate benefits for our uh, citizens. Uh, do you have any uh, insight on, on, on using sandboxes and, and, and to, to, for that development, for those developments? Perhaps not related directly to AI, but going back to the original topic of Tech for Good, uh, uh, Southeast Asia, ASEAN is actually pioneering when it comes to uh, sandboxes and pilots related to digital finance and the redefinition of uh, digital assets, for example. Um, some of the most pioneering CBDC executions um, are actually undertaken in Southeast Asia, even by, look at Project Bakung of uh, uh, Cambodia, right? It's actually being, uh, we were all recently in Kigali last June, where the hope is actually to bring the Project Bakung model in Cambodia and to bring it to um, Kigali in Africa. Uh, what I'd like to be able to see would be a closer reciprocity, I think, between um, the African Union, like I said earlier, and ASEAN, uh, because our needs are so similar, uh, blockchain and crypto. I know it's very controversial right now with what happened with FTX or even what's happening with Binance, but the future, I still continue to believe in the underlying technology, which is blockchain, and the tokenization of whether it be wheat or, or TEF in the future, um, I, I believe is sound. Uh, and I hope we can continue to have more of those um, pilots and sandboxes. Thank you. Uh, after the COVID experience that we had, tracking the disease using cell phone data and self-reporting symptoms, uh, our cabinet secretary made a decision early 2021 to actually introduce the concept of AI to improve public service delivery in all departments of the government. So in the last two and a half years, we sat with about 280 departments of the government. So ranging from health, education, disaster management, law enforcement, every, everybody. And identified about 1,000 specific instances where AI can actually provide improved service delivery to the citizens. And we are creating sandboxes right now. So I talked about the AI policy, but we're also guiding our different departments to create pilots because the very important aspect right now in order to use AI, develop AI literacy within policymakers is to actually just trying out pilots, doing proof of concept, proofs of concept. And that's exactly what we're doing. Recently at the UN General Assembly, we launched something called the Equality Center, E-Quality Center, which is actually going to focus on digital public infrastructure that was pioneered by the Indian presidency of G20, and I hope that will be continued by the Brazilian presidency and the use of AI to create public good and to put the right guardrails to, I guess, prevent any public bad happening because of the use of technology. Thank you, that's, that's wonderful. And I completely agree with you that sandboxes is also a way Absolutely. not just to test technology and policy, but bring all mode stakeholders up uh, up to the task and, and, and raise awareness and capacity building. We are developing uh, three sandboxes in Africa, one also in AI with the African Union, my, my, um, the think tank I'm part of, and I would love to invite you to join the global forum on sandboxes that we are, we are hosting. So 
uh, for the future or present, as the Brazilian representative was saying, we have to bring the future to the present, right? Amen. What are your uh, inspiring words and, and um, your hopes for the future that we bring to the present, as she was saying? Closing, <laughs> closing, statement. closing statements, yes, please. Yes. So, Carolina, uh, I always say in my talks, talk is cheap. A conference is even cheaper. So how I'm gonna close this, what can we do together? Together with your think tank, uh, if you would allow it, I'd like to work very closely with you on how we could bring that sandbox conference and sandbox model, especially between, um, uh, uh, you know, in the AU, African Union, and bring it to ASEAN. That's the first, and we hope to work closely with you on that. And um, Anir, I would like to redefine the relationship of the Philippines and Bangladesh. I know that uh, several years back, sometime in 2015, 2016, it was marred by a financial issue that had really left a bad taste in the mouth. And hopefully this small first step of us connecting, uh, we can work with you on the digital, sorry, an AI literacy program. Sure. Um, and if we could do an MOU between our organizations to work together, that would be my final words. That's for closely together. And see you all in ASEAN. A woman for action, I like that. Anir, yes, your final thoughts. Absolutely. So I, I, I fully agree with Amor. There is already action happening between Bangladesh and the Philippines. You'll be happy to know. Uh, we're working on digitization of the Bangsamoro region, the Muslim Mindanao region in the Philippines, which was war ravaged. And the, the minister of local government uh, from Philippines, when he visited Bangladesh, he saw a lot of similarities in the way we developed the digital transformation in Bangladesh from a 1% internet penetration to about 70% internet penetration in about, in, a, in about a decade and a half by developing thousands of digital centers which are providing the critical bridge between analog citizens and the digital world of service delivery. So that collaboration is already happening and more, you'll be happy to know. But globally, I think the sandbox idea, Carolina, that you just presented, I think is, is, is critical because it'll give us the very important understanding. So conferences, discussions, I think give us a good understanding of what can be done, but I think sandboxes give us a better understanding of what should be done because it gives us critical in, in, in inputs, right? Because it, it, it trains us. It provides the right literacy for the policymakers. So solving going with the Brazilian uh, minister's remarks this morning, solving futures problems, not the problems of the past, I think is the, is the theme that we should really go with to collaborative efforts that we can pen on paper and uh, go ahead with that. Thank you very much. Thank you so much and uh, I love ending this with this idea of let's solve the future now. So I really appreciate your energy, your partnership, and thank you for joining us in the digital studio today. Uh, and bye from Cape Town. Mabuhay. Ciao, ciao. <laughs> <laughs> bye, bidai. <laughs>